Judy. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. Glad to see you here this morning. Looking at it, I don't see any first time visitors this morning. So I'm glad everybody's here. I do want to make mention that the beautiful flowers here this morning was, was uh, from the Carico family. Uh, Brother Bill passed away last Friday. His service was on uh, this past Friday, and the family uh, uh, passed these flowers on us here to uh, decorate here this morning. So I thank Barbara and, Barbara and the family for that. Um, I think I have one calendar left. Is that the right, dude? Was yeah, one left? one left. There's one left. So if somebody would like that, let me know. Or my wife at the church. And uh, we'll take care of that. Uh, any announcements? Okay, Bo? Yeah, last night we had our first uh, center shot parking program. Christian outreach. We had uh, 30 free teams and teenagers here last night. Wow. Yes. Um, thank you for the everybody that the um, Lottie Moon were down with that and it was uh, almost reached their goal. That was really nice. Then we have a Wednesday night dinner this coming Wednesday. It's 6.15 in the Fellowship Hall. We're going to have chili, cornbread, and all the food teams to go with it and lots of new yummy desserts. So it might come. 6.15 in the Fellowship Hall Wednesday night. That's good. Any, any other announcements this time? Okay. Uh, I'll mention some prayer needs. Uh, uh, Kevin had to go to the hospital this morning, uh, take his daughter there. Uh, so uh, I just want to remember them while they're at the hospital this morning. And also, uh, Stephen Barber's uh, uh, granddaughter, I want to remember Sarah. So please lift her up in your daily prayers. And, uh, and then just uh, let's lift each other up. So uh, if we don't have anything else, I'm going to ask you all to turn to God in prayer right now, please. <clears throat> Blessed Father, we just thank you for the day you give us. And Lord, we uh, just pray your presence down through your Holy Spirit here now. Pray down into this building with us. Just ask, Lord, that everything that's done here today, all the words that's said, all the songs that's sung, are uplifting you and your son Jesus. Just thank you that you loved us so much that you gave him as a sacrifice for each one of us. Please bless this time now. And I ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first song is number... 537. Oh. Not 535. I picked the wrong one. So please uh, use 537.
seated. Good morning to you this morning. I trust you're well. It's good to see you uh, out this morning. A little uh, feels a little more like January this morning. <laughs> That's nice once in a while. Let's pray together. Awesome God, we uh, stand in awe of who you are today. We are thankful for the opportunity that you've given us to be in your house. My heart is uh, warm last night to uh, our a warm now to hear the results of last night, how many young folks. Uh, so I pray for Brother Bo that you would be with him as he not only teaches and instructs uh, uh, how to use the weapon, but I pray that you would guide him as he also teaches them and shares with them the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. Thank you for each one that's gathered, Father God. Pray for those that are going through difficult times, those who've lost loved ones. We pray you'd uh, be ever close as the God of all comfort. You promised to comfort those who need it. And I pray that you just uh, be with them. We read a scripture this morning in Sunday school that says, Blessed are they who die in the Lord from this moment on. That their works, their testimony, their story of how they came to know Christ will follow them for days to come. So I pray, Father God, that those who have uh, gone into your presence, uh, their spirits are in your presence even now. I pray that we would still benefit from their story, their testimony, the way they lived when they were on the face of the earth. Uh, be with us this day, I pray. Continue to uh, use this worship time for your honor and glory. Thank you for a new year. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, share the good news this year, uh, both uh, uh, where we live where we work, the opportunities that we have, uh, wherever we go to share our story, our testimony of how we came to know you. And may others see Jesus in us this year. May we tell the wondrous story of the one who died for us on a daily basis. Thank you for this day. Thank you for our time together, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, number 424. That'll be an offertory song.
McCaffrey to reason one. If you have a copy of God's Word, I invite you to look with me to Romans chapter uh, 9. Uh, I'm going to take a few verses from 9, chapter 10, and chapter 11. And uh, the first 11 chapters, as you uh, I'm sure are aware of, deal with uh, doctrines that we hold dear as children of God. And uh, this doctrine is no different. Uh, the doctrine of election is not an easy doctrine to talk about, but um, I'm going to do the best I know how to do in the few minutes we have together this morning. I uh, preached last Sunday at my home church over in Stafford, and uh, when I got to the Sunday school hour, the teacher got up and he said, uh, I don't have much time this morning, Pastor. They have two services, one at 8.15 and then Sunday school at 9.30, but uh, first service lasted a little longer. I don't know why the preacher was a little long-winded or something, I guess. The teacher was complaining about how little time he had to teach. So, uh, hopefully we won't be here till noon. 30 tomorrow, but uh, we'll see. All right. Uh, pray God speaks to your heart as we look at His Word today. And um, mysterious or merciful. Mysterious or merciful. The text is taken uh, from chapter 9, uh, chapter uh, 10, excuse me, and uh, chapter 11, 9, 10, and 11. Um, but I want to read just a few verses from uh, uh, chapter 11 to begin with. And then we'll look back at 9, 10 as well. Uh, beginning in uh, chapter 11, verse 25, it says, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved as it is written, the Deliverer will come out of Zion. He will turn away the ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But concerning the election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For as you were once disobedient to God, yet now have now obtained mercy through their disobedience. Even so, these also have now been disobedient. That through the mercy shown you, they may obtain mercy. For God has committed them to all disobedience that He might have mercy on all. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out. Awesome God that You are, I thank You for the few moments that we have together today to uh, look at Your Word, uh, to look at a... Uh, Scripture that has baffled uh, uh, men far uh, more astute than I and brighter than I. But I pray You'd speak to each of our hearts. I uh, pray that this uh, message might uh, quicken our spirit and speak in a way that would be uh, profitable for all. And may You draw us, may You challenge us, may You draw us in our thinking to uh, look to You for understanding, I pray. In the blessed name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, there are uh, three points I'd like to uh, try to leave with you in the next few moments. Um, the first is God's glorious mercy is offered in chapter 9. Secondly, the good news of God is often missed out in chapter 10, verse uh, in chapter 10 and Third, God's mysterious promise to Israel is that they will have another opportunity to obtain God's mercy in chapter 11. Life is mysterious, is it not? 
I often marvel at the uh, mysteries. I go to, uh, I like to go down on a quiet creek in Stafford County. Uh, uh, I'm not a great fisherman. Uh, my far, my uh, wife is a far better fisher person than I. She has a necessary ingredient for fishing. It's called patience. <laughs> Uh, but along a quiet creek, I have often marveled at how the, the tides come and go. How the moon draws the tide. And how they, they come out at certain times of the day. And it's hard to catch fish, some of those big catfish, when it goes out. But when that tide starts to come in, especially in the late evening hours when the tide is coming in. It's pretty amazing how the, the larger fish seem to be on the inward bound tide in the evening. I find many things interesting about life, the mysteries of life. Well, we've been coming over here. Uh, this is our second time to come to Jefferson. Uh, uh, about 10 years ago, we were here for a, a span of time. But uh, I, I'm always amazed that whatever lane we're in, coming, my wife does most of the driving now, and I'm always amazed whichever lane she's in, it's going to be the slowest lane. <laughs> I mean, those cars can be zipping. Um, we can pull into the right lane behind a car, and about the time you move into that left lane, uh, something in their uh, uh, mind must click that a car is getting ready to pass or they have an urgent moment that they need to but to try to pass that car in the left lane and you pull to the right lane it's uh, a mystery to me how and then you get to the next traffic light and they're sitting there waiting for you well they're not hard mysteries I know but life is full of many mysterious mysterious things uh, I can go into a uh, a nice restaurant and I can spill my lunch everywhere I was telling uh, Pastor Marshall uh, back in November we were over at the annual homecoming I was telling him about how uh, how my wife has decided that she is going to build me a trough on the table to try to contain my food and Marshall said please don't tell my wife about that <laughs> she'll be building a trough on my table so I don't know if you've ever noticed I can fix a peanut butter and mayonnaise sandwich or occasionally I like apple butter on my peanut butter but usually I like a about a quarter inch of peanut butter and then about a quarter inch of mayonnaise. That just helps it slide down. You know? uh, I've been a fond fan of uh, Duke's mayonnaise for a long time, but I can fix that beautiful peanut butter sandwich and I can eat it in the kitchen and not spill much. I can go in the family room and I'm not in there five minutes before I've turned it face up. Uh, or I, I don't get to eat in the living room very often, but at Christmas time, uh, I go in there to look and watch the tree at night or, or uh, play with my train around the tree for a little bit. And I can spill most anything in the living room because it's got that beautiful light covered carpet. Seems like a mystery that you can eat it in one part of the house and not spill anything. I can go into a restaurant or somebody else's house and make a, a mess in short order. So mysteries are all about us. Well, this is a mysterious portion of Scripture when you look at it. The doctrine of election is not one that's uh, easily uh, discerned, but hopefully uh, today will be helpful in your understanding. God's glorious mercy is offered to all men. The Apostle Paul, uh, we were studying about him in Sunday school this morning and, and about his story and how often he was bold in sharing that story. And it didn't matter if he was before the most 
dangerous of people, he was bold to share what Christ had done for him on the Damascus road. I find it amazing, even when he was before King Agrippa II, the last of the, the dynasty of the Herods, and the Herods had not been favorable at all to the people of the way, the people uh, who followed Christ, and known as the sect or the people of the way. Uh, the Herods had not been uh, favorable to them at all. You remember Herod the Great had tried to murder Christ. Uh, he, after he found out that there was a new king born king of the Jews, he, he wanted to do away with all the babies to and under. And, the, and you can follow it. Uh, when Joseph hears from God again through the angel uh, that Herod the Great is dead, he, he starts to make his way back to Judea and the angel appears to him and said, don't go back to Judea. You must go into Galilee because one of Herod's sons, Archelaus, is now ruler. And he uh, has a bad name for killing off descendants and people of the way. So even at that early age, uh, the Herods were great trouble. Then the grandsons, um, Herod the Tetrarch and Herod the uh, King Agrippa the First. But Paul was so bold, it didn't matter which one of the Herods was on the throne, he was going to tell his story. And so uh, God's mercy. Many people will choose to reject God's offer of mercy, as you see in the opening part of verses uh, uh, chapter 9. Notice verse 1, it says, I tell you the truth in Christ, and I'm not lying. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow, continual grief in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed for Christ, for my countrymen, for my brethren, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. The Apostle Paul said, I just wish somehow that the people, the Jewish people would respond as I have to the good news of Jesus Christ. But he said, as the mercy goes out so often, people reject it. And you see it over and over again, how there is this rejection of the message of Jesus Christ. He said, but some will choose to receive it. And we see down in verse 22 of chapter 9, what if God wanting to show His wrath and to make His power known endured with much long suffering vessels of wrath prepared for destruction that He might make known the riches of His glory on the vessels of mercy which He has before beforehand and so even through all of the, the the struggle of sharing the message of Jesus Christ some people chose to be followers of Christ it's not uh, not uh, uncommon even in the 21st century I mean if there were a common practice for people to follow Christ this building would be full today be full today, but it's not because people today find everything else to do than to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So His mercy is offered over and over, rejected in a large part today, even today, by not only Jew but Gentiles alike. Some will choose to receive God's offer of mercy but many will choose not to. He will bless those who believe. We see in verses uh, 22 and following. Uh, he will call, call them my people who were not my people. Talking about the Gentiles. Talking about you and I having an opportunity to respond to the good news. But he says in verse 20, 27 there, 
Uh, just like in the Old Testament, there will be a remnant who will return from captivity. There will be a re remnant upon whom uh, mercy will be shown and they will be saved. So God offers His mercy today. The good news of God is often missed when you look at chapter 10 and how it connects to chapter 9. He says in verse 1 of chapter 10, My heart's desire. Uh, hopefully you got a little card when you came in. I don't know if you have a, a passion for those of your family or those of your uh, relatives or not who are without Christ, but uh, I have a challenge for you. Uh, I put that little card right at the, uh, close to the bullseye on the target today and think of uh, not a sure shot, not thinking of shooting a... Uh, uh, learning to shoot a bow so much, but a uh, sharing of your faith, telling of your story, how important it is. And he said, uh, my heart's desire, verse 1, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. So you got about uh, 360 days now before the first Sunday of January 2021. Now 360 days. Who's your one? I want you to think about one person, whether they are family or a relative or somebody uh, associate you work with or, or your neighbor. Think of those, those four kind of headings. Uh, your, I call them your friends. Your, your family, your relatives, your associates, or your neighbors. That covers about everybody you know. And I was thinking about, uh, there's a space on your little card to write, who, who is my one? And the thing I think would be exciting this year to celebrate is every time that one comes to know Christ. We as a church family would uh, have a pep rally almost, you know, it says the angels in heaven rejoice when one comes to know Jesus. When one comes to know Jesus, the angels in heaven rejoice. Wouldn't it be great if we rejoiced every time you're one? Now, I'm trying to think, is my one one of my family members? And there are many that I could select out of my family who do not know Jesus. Um, uh, fortunately, out of my my, my son and my daughter do. Um, I think uh, probably uh, five, I'm not sure whether all six of my grandchildren do yet. Hopefully they all six do. I'm not sure about the youngest little girl. But uh, the other five do so far. Um, but I'm thinking of my brother, my two brothers. Not even sure about my oldest brother. Uh, he talks a lot about it, but uh, you don't see any fruit from his life, if you understand what I, what I mean. So who is your one? My, my one is my mechanic on my car or truck. I've been sharing with Dana for some time, Mr. Bryant. So if I wrote down in that little space there on the target, who is my one? I'd have to put uh, Dana Bryant. Uh, maybe you know him. I hope you don't. But if you do, you know, you'll know you know him now because I'm going to pray for him every day. And I have talked to uh, Dana this past year. I have stopped in the garage 15 or 20 times just to talk to him about his soul. He is as good as gold. But his goodness is not going to make him a child of the King. Only His choice to follow Jesus. So I hope today you'll uh, pray about who's my one. And write in that little blank there, who's my one? It might be a, a family member or a, uh, might be a friend or it might be your neighbor who lives close by or doesn't live close by. Or it might be uh, somebody you work with every day or have worked with. So... Who's your one? Pray about it. Fill it in. And then every day, pray till that one 
comes to know Jesus. Just think about it. I don't know how many folks are in this room now. Maybe uh, preachers always guess high. So let's just say there are 40 folks in here now. Hopefully there are more now. But let's just say there are 40 folks in here. Think if every one of us, not in trying to reach a lost world for Christ, but would reach one in 2020. It'd make a big difference by, by next year this time. Make a big difference, wouldn't it? If we could begin to, to see God change our community, our family, our relatives to know Jesus. So who's your one? We see that passion both in chapter 9 and the opening couple verses. He said, uh, I'm in great sorrow, grief in my heart. I wish that I were accursed for Christ that my brethren, my countrymen, my fellow Jewish brothers could know Jesus as their Savior. And then he said, my heart's desire, chapter 10, verse 1, my heart's desire, my prayer to God for Israel. So who is your passion? Who is your target? Who's in the bullseye between you and God for 20 so God, do you have a passion, but also God has a plan to save all who call on His name. What an what a awesome portion of Scripture it is in chapter 10. One of, my, one of my favorite when it comes to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Of course, Romans, uh, it's hard to beat Romans when it comes to sharing what God has done in Romans 3.23 says we have all sinned and come short of God's glory. Romans 5.8 uh, says God showed forth His love. Think about the uh, worst thing you've ever done for a moment. Can you picture the worst thing you've ever done in your mind? Mine's not good. I don't have to think too long the worst thing I've ever done. He says... Uh, on that day when the thing you did and it was the worst thing you've ever done, Romans 5, 8 says that God showed forth His love toward you. When you were still a sinner, Christ died for you. On the day when you were still a sinner, and then He, he tells us in Romans 6, 23 that the payment of our sin is separation from God. But, the latter part of 623, the gift of God is eternal life. Then you come to chapter 10 and verse 9 and it says, if you confess with the mouth that Jesus, uh, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you'll be saved. So he says two things. We have to... Confess with the mouth that Jesus is Lord. And then we have to believe. We have to put our faith, our trust in Him that God raised Him from the dead. And then verse 13 says, Whoever, that includes everyone in this room, includes everyone in the world, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever me, you, anyone. And then I love verse 17. It says, uh, For faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes through the Word of God. Faith, when we hear, we should respond to that call from God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes through the Word of God. So every opportunity, think about your one. Think about sharing with that one. Very simple. We often refer to it as the Roman road. You've heard it, uh, many of you, I can see from your nodding heads, you've heard of the Roman road many times over. Romans 3.23, we've all sinned. Romans 6.23, the payment of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 10.9, if we confess with the mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe then we put our trust in Him. 
And then whoever calls on the name of the Lord. Four or five verses you can share what God means to you in a very simple presentation. So God has a plan for your life and mine. He had a plan and the Apostle Paul under inspiration of the Spirit says, my passion, my passion is for my countrymen that they would be saved. He said they have uh, a witness that they have a zeal for God, but it's not according to knowledge. They have this they have a passion. They might say, I, I live by the Ten Commandments. Well, if you don't obey number one, uh, you can't come to know Jesus without a, being obedient to number one. No other gods before me. You came to be a follower of Jesus Christ and be obedient to the Ten Commandments because you've already broken at least number one. <laughs> so, a passion. Do you have a passion? Can you follow God's plan to confess, to believe, to call on His name, to act by faith, and then share that with others? And then God's mysterious promise. <clears throat> God's mysterious promise to Israel is that they will have another opportunity. God is giving opportunities over and over in the, uh, in the day and age we live, but one day the trumpet's going to sound. And for, for people on this earth, we will have that last opportunity as a child uh, you will have a, no more opportunity when God calls the church away from this earth. If you're, whoops, that didn't good. I got uh, too much turkey this Christmas. And, uh, my uh, belt uh, doesn't hold the, oh, anyway. So, you uh, uh, when will the harvest for the Jew take place? It'll take place during the most difficult time in all history. It'll take place, the harvest will take place during the seven years of tribulation. You talk about difficult surroundings. The seals are being opened. The bowls are being opened. Um, look back at Daniel for a minute and see God's calendar, His calendar of events in Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. He's talking about uh, his calendar of the end times. And he is uh, sharing it with the prophet Daniel. Uh, some, some 400, 500 years uh, before the time of Christ. 70 weeks, verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for the holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up this vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place, the holy of holies. So 70 weeks, 70 times 7, if you will. 490. Know therefore and understand, verse 25, that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there will be 7 weeks and 60 and 2 weeks, or 69 weeks. And the street will be built again in the wall of the temple even in troublesome times. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off. And the people of the prince who is to come 
shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end shall be with a flood till the end of the war, and desolations are determined. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of that week, so the one week is a seven year period of time, as we know as the tribulation. And in the middle of that week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. So the first three and a half years, it will seem like uh, there is still a, a uh, presence of God in the, the temple being used and, and rebuilt. And on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation which is determined, and it is poured out on the desolator. So on the Antichrist it will be poured out. So you come to the Revelation, and when you turn to the Revelation, you discover in the Revelation that God offers the Jewish nation again Six, not one, not two, but six overtures of mercy. You can look at them. The gospel is presented uh, over and over. Now, I happen to believe that the church age, which is uh, represented by chapters two and three in the Revelation, uh, is where we're living today in the church age. And uh, I happen to be a, a believer that in chapter 4 and verse 1 is where the rapture, uh, now the word rapture doesn't appear in the English Bible, uh, but uh, the catching away of the church, if you will. It appears in the Latin Vulgate, the word repair, uh, which means to be caught away and the, the church will be caught away and I believe that takes place in Revelation 4, 1, where it says, And I looked, and behold, uh, John is seeing this vision, a door standing open in heaven, and the first voice that I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you the things that will take place after this. And immediately... I was in the Spirit and behold a throne. And so chapters 4 and 5 deal with the, the throne room of God. And then you begin to see God's invitation as it comes forth. Uh, uh, you see the 144 in chapter 7 are sealed. This is His second overture of mercy. Uh, even in the midst of the seals being poured out. So it's going to be destruction everywhere you look, but in the midst of those, God is extending to His people again mercy. Offering to them to come by the same way you and I have come, by faith. Uh, chapter 11, the third overture of mercy. I will give power to two of my witnesses. So first 144, 12,000 from each tribe. Kind of like Elijah on Mount Carmel, isn't it? Elijah on Mount Carmel said, God, I'm the only one left. God said, no, you're not. There are 7,000 who haven't bowed. There are 7,000 other who haven't bowed before Jezebel. You're not the only one left before Ahab and Jezebel. So we see then all of these overtures, sending of His Word. But when you come down to uh, Revelation chapter uh, uh, 18, it's the last overture of mercy. The last overture of grace. But it's the same way each time. Look in chapter 14 of the Revelation. In verse 6 it says, And I saw another angel flying from the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, give Him glory. For the hour of His judgment is at hand. Still offering to them springs of living water. Still offering to them a way of escape. But by the time you come to chapter 
18, the last invitation is offered in verse 4 where he says, you better come out of Babylon. That wicked people, that wicked sea, a city, come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins or transgressions. The harvest, the great harvest, will be offered up until those last three and a half, maybe the last year and a half, who knows, but it'll be offered during those seven years. God will consider continue to extend that invitation to all people. There are so many scriptures. I wish I had time uh, to look in Isaiah and Jeremiah at all the scriptures that pertain. But Isaiah 59, 20 says, those who turn from their transgression in the last days, those who turn from their transgression in the last days, I will have mercy on them. God's mercy available over and over. I often think of His, that, that great harvest that He promises to any Jew who would respond, but think how difficult. Part of the earth is destroyed here. Uh, uh, great volcanoes erupting, stars falling from the sky, hailstorms, uh, plague after plague, like we saw before Pharaoh. And God's mercy. God's mercy. Why, why wait to uh, a time when it's so difficult to come to know God? It says that His mercy is still available today. I love 2 Peter 3.9. 2 Peter 3.9 says that the Lord is not slack. As some people count slackness. He is not slow as some people count slowness, your translation might say. But is long-suffering. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come repentance. Long suffering. Long on patience. Not willing that any should perish. Any should be separated. But that all should come to repentance. Do you have that peace today? If you have that peace, that love for God even now is part of your story part of your testimony, something that you should be sharing with your family and, and your friends and your neighbors. Have you ever seen somebody just bubbles forth with that all the time? I mean, you can't hardly quiet them down. They just have to tell everybody about who Jesus is. I'm married to one like that. I mean, we don't have, sometimes I'm timid. She is never timid about telling somebody about Jesus. If she is gifted with anything, she's gifted with sharing the love of Jesus with those who don't know about it. That's a great boldness to have. I think she picked that up from her uncle Ernie, who was a pastor for many years up in Erie, Pennsylvania. And I think she got that boldness from Uncle Ernie. How about you today? Do you have that peace? Peace that passes all understanding. How about your family and your friends? That person who works on your automobile. Uh, you might be the one who works on others' automobiles. If you are, you have that opportunity to share the, the love. Awesome God that you are. I think of the song we're going to sing now and I think of the people who still put off day in and day out responding to your awesome call to trust you as Savior. The song says, I've wandered far away from home. God has given so many opportunities for you to come home. For you to come to the foot of the cross 
for you to do exactly what Brother Randy sang about, to come to Calvary. We have that opportunity right now. In the stillness of these moments, you don't have to wait to the earth is being destroyed by this and that and you're, the only way you can eat is getting the mark of some beast stamped on your forehead. You can come in the quietness of a country church and call Pepper County, Virginia on the fifth day of January, 2020. That invitation is open to you, but it's open to those of your family, your relatives, your friends, your associates, your neighbors. I pray. Won't you come? Won't you share? Won't you discover who your one is and begin to pray for that one? Begin to talk to that one? Begin to share with that one. I pray you will. Brother Randy, would you lead us? Sister Judy's going to pray for uh, play for us. Probably pray for us too. Happy birthday, young fella. And uh, Brother David's birthday, Ham, is today, I saw. So 
Uh, maybe you can uh, give him a call, a shout out today or something. Uh, Brother Ray, would you uh, close us in prayer? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you once again for a beautiful day. Lord, we just thank you for blessing us a place to worship. Thank you for Pastor Bowman bringing us a message, Lord. As we start this new year, Lord, we just thank you for the past year, Lord, and we pray for the upcoming year, Lord God. Uh, provide us many more opportunities to worship and to fellowship with one another, Lord, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you again for your love and thank you for your son, Jesus. Be with us as we go our separate ways today, Lord God, and just bring us back safely once again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.